Um, and then, yeah, if you just want to take a look like at these lyrics, I declare to you a zapatiado dance, and then um, singing to dawn or daybreak, alamana says, cantando alamana says, is that um, translation. So it would be like, they say each part, right? I declare to you a zapatiado dance, this is the chorus, so this would be repeated after each line, right? So, over the ocean of the tarima, singing to dawn or daybreak, it dawns above, and then repeat, so basically that. You just want to take a look at those lyrics real quick. If any of you are poets, I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages of this stuff, so I can give you anything that you want. Uh, Fandango. Okay, so Son Jarocho is presented most commonly in Mexico <coughs> at the Fandangos. That is where it is super present, right? Um, and these Fandangos, it, it's, that's not the event. The event might be a quinceañera, or a marriage ceremony, or the party afterwards, or a birthday, or a funeral, or, you know, Pablo got a new job, Fandango, you know? Dad got a raise, Fandango, you know? Um, and, that's, and that's, like, so true. You know, um, this, the, the Fandangos I was going to actually, they were actual um, city festivals that people, um, the city and, and say the, the coordinator had a really good relationship, so we could talk, so we could uh, basically play in the middle of the plaza or in the middle of the streets, and it's completely fine, you know. And we would play till, till noon, right? I actually wanted to add that picture, um, that photo I took at this Fandango, um, and Blair already sent it. And that obviously, I took that photo at 7.30 in the morning. That fandango uh, began at about midnight the night before and went till about noon after that was taken. But I like took that on our way to the hotel because I was tired. So, um, so yeah, just to give you an idea, like this is something that's been going on forever and it's, it's just what they do, you know? Um, I was, somebody asked me, last night, you know, is this, is this, just, is, is this a hobby or is this something that, you know, people do for a living? And it's kind of like, it's kind of like, it, it's kind of like if I wanted to do something, you know, at night, I'm going to have a day job, but I'm always going to be wanting to do that thing that I do at night. You know what I mean? And for instance, like a bunch of these people are very young. And so what they do is they either get paid to teach lessons or they have other jobs. They're cooks or whatever. And then the time that they need to take, they'll take off and they'll ride that seven hour bus ride just to go play, you know. Uh, at the same time, it's almost like it's a concert season. Like there's a season where a lot of um, pandangos happen consecutively. So they work the whole first part of the year and then, all right, like we can go travel now. And then, you know, just take the instruments. Um, it's just another, just another mentality and I really love it, so. Um, I covered. Despite being a jam type of setting, a fandango does uh, operate under a certain form with particular social etiquette. I kind of touched on that. Um, and like I said, I look out for this other presentation because I'm really excited to, to kind of really get into the fandango. You know, something that just happens in an evening, but there's so much content. And there's so much that you can talk about uh, when you're talking about a fandango. Um, this is the video that isn't going to end up working, sorry. And um, I just wanted to kind of let you know of future presentations, that I'm, I, I, the information that I kind of want to incorporate um, later on. Um, the Fandango on San Jarocho's activism. I want to talk about the um, presence of, of San Jarocho in Texas um, and East LA. Um, a lot of the people that are learning about it here have been going down to Mexico and have come up you know, with just more inspiration and new ideas um, for activism um, and, and for, for social forums and stuff like that. Um, East LA obviously historically is, is a very Latino community and so um, a lot of the people from Mexico that play Son Jarocho, um, when they think about traveling to the States, they basically talk about moving to either the Valley of Texas or East LA and, and it's, it's becoming known that like, if you still want to continue to play Son Jarocho and you're from Mexico and you don't know where to go, like those are the, those are really two big hot spots right now. Um, 
And then I also want to talk about the laudelo, um, the culture of the instrument maker. Again, just this whole other culture um, in terms of the instrument makers. Um, the example that I've been that I've been using um, is basically how we have like how we have gardens or like um, a storage shed. They have workshops where they make these instruments. So basically, like every other house that I walked into, they, it was a maker's house. So they would just have these workshops with, you know, this instrument is made from one piece of wood. So they had, other than the, the top, right? But this is, this is cedar, one huge piece of cedar. And you walk in and you walk into the house and then you walk to the back and it's just stacks of solid pieces of wood, you know, stacks and stacks and stacks. And then like bins of, of these, of the tuning pegs, um, which I almost included a photo that I had um, of this guy. Um, I'll give you like a little example. Like um, what they do is they they have like apprentices, right? Like we have tattoo apprentices or whatever apprentice to to be a writer, tattoo, you know, uh, anything, right? Anything that you're in training to do, you're an apprentice. So they have apprentices, and one of the people that one of the one of the persons that I um, visited had his apprentice there, and he was about my age, and uh, he's sitting there on this stool, on this work table, just carving these tuning pegs. And he had a whole bin of these tuning, like he had been doing that for like four hours. Just like, because he doesn't know, you know, how many the maker is about to start making, you know, so he's just making sure that he's got plenty of tuning pegs. And he's just doing it, you know, just, just by a little chisel, you know, hand, hand carving. Um, but one of one of the best memories was probably just seeing people make these. I mean, it's really something else. Um, but I mainly just wanted to open up for questions at this point. If anybody has any, you you are mentioning yeah. about the event in Fandango. Can you tell them about the event of Fandango in person? Yeah. Well, the main reason that uh, I felt it really important to do this presentation was because the Fandango is happening on Thursday, um, and uh, I just wanted to give y'all context of. of that means, you know, what that is. So it's obviously not going to go till till noon the next day after we start. It's going to be like a diet version. But um, but but yeah, it's going to be here at the TOU Plaza uh, from six to eight, and we have uh, food food donations um, coming in. And um, again, this community from from like the community of, of Texas had Hopefully, um, several of them show. Um, I've already got confirmation from the Valley folks, people from San Antonio and uh, people from Austin as well that will be coming and, and um, they're, they're super excited. I was talking to them last night, they're super excited about you know, the, the potential curiosity that everyone on campus you know, might have about this because it's, it's gonna look pretty crazy. You know, a bunch of people huddled around a dance floor you know, just jamming out old traditional Mexican <laughs> songs. So they're really excited to, to inform people and educate people because that's basically what the people in Mexico do, you know? If they see a bunch of like, you know, Mexicano, American, Americano kids coming in, like obviously with a curiosity, they just, they take, they, they took us in. You know, they, they just completely take you in. So I really, you know, it's something that, um, that uh, I really like about it is that the people that are involved here in, in Texas they know that that is what we need to be doing as far as people that do know about this art form because it's here and, and we're not there and there's people here that, that need to find out about it as well, you know. So, anyway, any questions? With the influence of it coming into tech you know, people bringing it into Texas, is, it, um, is there a cross-culture kind of happening with it? In other words, um, it's not a lot of with a Chicano or something of that nature, or is it Actually, yeah, no, it, it is. It, it's it's getting it's getting varied. Um, and what's really cool is that you know, um, even people in even people in in Mexico that have been playing in their bands for years and years and years, they're they're also progressing their music. But it's kind of this fine line of you know we're still absolutely preserving what we what has been created with our own little variations. And so with that in mind, since all of us have been traveling to Mexico and, and seeing that that is the case, um, we do add like cumbia, um, like instead of just straight, you know, we 
where you go, and then just like start kind of incorporating other lyrics. So we've been incorporating like cumbia, and, and yeah, there is kind of this like flair, you know, that we're that we're kind of putting on. And we have, you know, like I remember we we did start kind of playing in that way when we were not at a fandango but jamming at somebody's house, and there were a bunch of people there that you know from Mexico, obviously that that play it there, and, and they they weren't offended, which is a good sign. Um, and, and they were totally like, yeah, like you guys, you guys are doing really well. Like this is a really good idea. Like y'all are just, y'all, are, you, you have, you know, you've got the idea, and you know, you're preserving it. So, but yeah, there is. We, we kind of, whenever we jam together, there are like the cumbia influences that kind of come in. Or we make it like a little sky -y or a little, you know, reggae -y type of thing. Because that, but also that's kind of like what it is naturally too. It's kind of got this. If you listen to recordings, you know, it's got kind of this laid back, kind of very rhythmic, very entrancing feel to it. So things like cumbia kind of like lend itself to it, you know. 